I'm glad you came too because we wouldn't have a message without you. Well, last week I made everybody wait for me because uh, I didn't have someone with a driver's license to drive the car. Yeah, I can drive, but I ain't supposed to. I'm the one that was able to. You can drive, but right now it's illegal for you to do it. Yeah, so, but it worked out. I was everybody waiting for me, didn't you? That was very well, nice of you. glad for that. Yeah. All okay, right. Okay, I got a special message for you. I'm going to hold you to it. In uh, Mark chapter uh, 11. Mark chapter 12. I said it wrong. I'm sorry. And, uh, Mark chapter 12. The first two verses talks about how that they came to uh, I don't want to uh, bang into it. You got one, huh? just, the, no. just the music, Brenda. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, but the uh, the uh, so, uh, they were questioning Jesus and trying to find fault with him. Mm -hmm. And one of them is about the Caesar coin. They took a coin, or they asked him what authority he had, and he said, "Well, show me a coin." And so they brought a coin. And showed it to him. The person who brought the coin into the temple could have been stoned to death. Because mm. they brought a coin in that said, Caesar is God. Mm. And they could have been stoned for that. Mm. And Jesus said, He thought that they could catch him and say, Well, we don't shouldn't pay taxes. And then they would turn him over to the pilot. You know, mm. and, they thought they had him here. One way or the other, he was going to get in trouble. And uh, so he's, they showed him the coin, and he said, whose image is on it? He said, Caesar. He said, well, give to Caesar. What is Caesar? Give to God. What is God? Amen. And, oh, they weren't <laughs> expecting that answer. And so let's get into this. Well, Caesar wasn't because, expecting what happened to him either. What? I said, Caesar wasn't expecting what happened to him either. So let's let's uh, read Mark uh, 12, uh, two verses at the first, and then start it back up to 28. Does anybody want to read? I do. Okay. Uh, you can read 12 and 13. The first All right. First. And, uh, I agree. Okay. And Brenda? Okay, well, we're going to have to divide it up. Ray, if you'll okay. take uh, 28 to 31, and then Brenda take 30. To the 34. Uh, I think that's pretty close to it. So, Daddy God, I pray that you bless this word, that we might learn from your word and grow by it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Those of you that would like to honor the word of God, please stand. And Adam, take the start Adam, face this way, buddy. Adam, face this way. Okay. Now say. And they saw and they hold on him, he feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken in parable against them. And they left him, and they went their way. And they sent unto him a certain Pharisees of here Herodians to catch him in his words. Alright. And one of the scribes came and heard him arguing recognizing that he had answered them well, asked him, what commandment is the foremost of all? Jesus answered, the foremost is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment there than you. Christ said unto him, Well, Master, you have said the truth. For there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the hearts, and with the understanding, and with all the souls, and with all the strength and love, his neighbor as himself is more than all who burnt offerings and sacrifice. And when Jesus saw that he answered, he 
discreetly. God, 
Elohim many gods is El, one God. And that doesn't make any sense until you understand the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit is one. And so you know, that's a little secret hidden in that verse. There's uh, some secrets there that you don't, until you get into it, you don't always get it. But to love the Lord your God with all your heart is Jesus' explanation. And with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. But that's the first thing. Do you really love God with all your heart? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very much. Wish I did. Almost. I love you too. Uh, <laughs> that, that if we're honest with ourselves, there's times we don't. Yes. Yeah. And that Tired. is our problem. Is we don't love God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we love God more, uh, it, would be, it would be a different world. Mm -hmm. We need to love God with all our heart. And see, that's the whole thing. Um, there's another scripture, and maybe I should have done this one, uh, where it talks about two masters. Mm -hmm. And serve two masters. Do you hate one and love the other, or I can't remember the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> or love the other and hate the one. What's that? Or love the other and hate the one, you can't serve two. Right. You can't serve God and man. Okay. Sure. Let me, let me point it out. Both the well. Lord, you your God, I mean, you cannot have two masters. Or either you will love the one and hate the other. If you uh, are really love Satan, but you're saying you love God and you don't, there are people like that. If you do that, you honestly in your heart will hate the one you, that you put forward. And then the other case is, is that if you you cannot serve two masters if you will uh, love one, love the Lord your God and then hold on to something. But we know and despise is the word there. You will despise the other. Mm -hmm. You will hold on to one and in the process you despise the other. Mm -hmm. And that, that second one is what? The first one is about people who are not born again but pretend to be Christian. Yeah. The yeah. second part are Christians who are trying to hang on to something. The hearts are divided. Yeah. Oops. Thanks, Pastor. I was thinking you all come. <laughs> the heart is divided in a fog. But you can't do it. The love the Lord God with all our heart. That's something we have to work on. And um, there's always little things that want to come up and cause division in our mind. And so we need to, to love him with all our heart and all our souls. And here's the way you do that. Would you like to have a way to do that? Yeah. To love the Lord with all your heart? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's read it. And the second is like this, namely this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. If you want to love God with all your heart, you love your neighbor as yourself. You cannot love your neighbor too much. You know, we get sidetracked and we don't realize that God loves other people very, very much. And He loves them just as much as we love God. He doesn't love one of us more than the other. And He wants us to get alone. He doesn't want us to be running down. I once had I once had a neighbor that made that very hard though. What? Huh? I said I once had a neighbor that made that very hard. <laughs> but see, that's the whole thing. It's when someone doesn't deserve our love and we give it to them anyway, guess what? That has more of an effect on them than anything we can say. It just that it's, it's very hard for us to hold up to that. But to love your neighbor as yourself is the way to love God more. So we're going to pray for your enemies. What? Just pray for your enemies. Right. That's another way of doing it. Pray for them. Yeah. Pray for them. Uh, what if you love them good or One second. Um, <laughs> you're trying to get good. 
Hey, uh, I can't think of the professor's name. Um, Xavier? There was a professor in seminary. He had been a music professor at, uh, the, uh, not the University of Texas, but Texas State University, the other one. And uh, he had been a professor there. And because he was a devout and Christian, they, a lot of the professors would make fun of him because they didn't want a Christian there. And so there was one particular Christian, uh, one, not, there was one particular professor who was not a Christian, picked on Dr. Hunt, his name was Dr. Hunt, very profusely. I mean, he just, every set, every chance he got, he gave him a jab. You know, he did everything he could to aggravate and make him feel bad about being a Christian. And Dr. Hunt was following Jesus, and he was a man of prayer. And so he started praying for him. And he prayed that he would get such a windfall. I don't think of the word windfall. Occasionally now I hear it. But he would get such a windfall that he would realize only God could give it to him. And so he just kept praying that one thing over and over. Give it such a windfall that he would realize that God gave it to him. And so it rocked on for months, maybe years. I don't know how long it went on. But his phone rang one day. And this is the guy, and it was the guy that always jabbed him and was always saying things to hurt him. And with any way he could run Dr. Hunt down, he would. And he didn't mind who it was, the students or what. He was right off the hunt field. And so here's this guy calling me. And he called him, and Dr. Hunt said hello. And uh, he said, well, I got something that's so amazing. Nobody's going to believe it. But I knew you being a religious man, you would know, you would understand this. And he said he had gotten a huge windfall that he had never expected to get. Uh, that's a <laughs> and he called him to let him know. You know, would you really pray for your enemy to get a windfall? No, hard to do. You do it. You should know. No matter how bad it is. Okay, but that that is what yeah, Dr. Hunt did. Well, uh, I don't know if I would pray for him that way, but that's what he did. And I Part of that was probably what God wanted him to pray. But he he prayed for a windfall for this guy until he called him and told him that had happened, that he had gotten a windfall. That's praying for your enemies, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, praying for your enemies. And God help them to have a flat tire. Yeah. That's a curse. No. Yeah, that's a curse. That's not blessing them. But he prayed that God would bless him. Bless. Um, all right. And to love him with all your heart, with all thine understanding, with all thy soul, and to love your neighbor as himself is more than the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. See, the scribe that had asked the question, that's the way he responded when Jesus said, He said, You're right. And those two things are more than all the burnt offerings and, and sacrifices. There was a guy trying to tell me how he was perfect. He was a perfect Christian. <laughs> and that uh, I said, okay, the Bible says to have a perfect and undefiled religion is to visit the widows and the orphans and their affliction. And I said, we give to the Nigerian widows at our church. So I got you topped. Do you give anything to widows? And they kind of got him on that. And I know he was faking it because of what he's doing now, but I'm not going to get into it. But the thing is, 
That is pure religion, is to visit the widows and the orphans according to law. Yeah. That's what he said. Pure religion is to visit the widows and the orphans. Yes. They didn't even ask the farmers to leave the second harvest for them. Did not go back and glean after they'd already did okay. their harvest. Not the second harvest, but trying to leave everything. Right. Yeah, whatever was left over, they'd leave to the widows and orphans. Uh -huh. I, like that. Uh, I, don't I really like that. Okay. Verse 34. And when Jesus saw, he answered discreetly. He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. Whenever you begin to understand this, how we treat to love God with all our heart, and how we treat other people, is more than anything you can think about. Oh, yeah. This one watching. guy, to me, is, is such a real example, and I would like to tell you more, but I shouldn't. But he was trying to justify himself as being perfect. But you're not justifying yourself as being perfect. You don't understand things. And on top of that, if you yourself. really were perfect, you will be caring about widows and orphans. Right. But if you yeah. were, yeah. if you're trying to be perfect, you would visit yeah. the widows and the orphans to care for them. Because mm -hmm. in Nigeria, they're going through hell. Oh, yeah. Really much hell. And that's not even as bad as uh, Sudan and Ethiopia right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Ethiopia just... Ethiopia is terrible. People are dying from no food, no medicine. No God wants us to love Him, God, with all our heart. And if we love Him with all our heart, then we will love one another the way that we should. Amen. That's the problem. What? Okay. I have to ask for to have me working on that one because I got a neighbor I really don't care for. <laughs> you pray for him to have a windfall. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you, Lord, and we know that you're a loving God, a caring God. A God that is of great, that you want good things to happen to us. Help us to understand your plan is perfect. Our plan is not. And I pray, Lord, right now that your word will come forth in great victory in our lives. Help us to shed off everything that is contrary to you and put you first. And God, I pray that you would bless it would be on these people here today. That you would bless them and prosper them because they came to the house of God. They made a sacrifice to be in the house of God. Let them be blessed this way, we, and let them be called by your name, Yeshua HaMessiah, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. You can shake hands and be